Hi, in this video I'm going to give you a demonstration to prepare you for project one. In this project we will be normalizing wave functions so I'd like to give you a little bit of theoretical background on that and then show you how to do it numerically in MATLAB. So to begin we have to talk about inner products. So for functions f and g we define the inner product as an equation one here. We've already seen integrals like this, uh, but this is called the scalar product uh, because the result is a scalar. Like I said, we've already used it to discuss whether a wave function is normalized. The normalization condition is like this equation here in the middle uh, where it's psi magnitude squared dx equals one. So this actually is a non-normalized wave function and that psi magnitude squared integral really is the inner product of psi with itself. It turns out it's very easy to find a normalized wave function, so we'll call that psi tilde, and to get psi tilde, you just take psi and you multiply it by one over the square root of the inner product of psi with itself. So it's basically just this scalar uh, and you take its square root. Now this works because if psi satisfies the time-independent Schrodinger equation, then so does a psi for some arbitrary constant a. And all we've done here was find an appropriate a that will scale our wave function in such a way that it does satisfy the normalization integral. Okay, so we need numerical integration in MATLAB, and so I will just give you a demonstration of how to do that. So let's go over to MATLAB, and I have a blank screen, so let's just start a new script. Uh, it's actually a new live script, and I'm going to call it Project One Demo. And then if I put here two percent signs, and then enter, it becomes a title for us. I will add a section called Parameters, we're going to be working in a unitless variable. Uh, hopefully you've already seen the discussion I gave you on unitless analysis. So our unitless variable is going to be u, and I'm going to set a minimum value and a maximum value. And we're going to be working with 101 u points. Okay, so I've made some parameters. Briefly, I'm going to save this file. And we'll run it just to make sure it works. Okay, now I'm going to add another section called calculations. We'll define a u vector. And let's now create a wave function. So we'll run this again. Okay, everything works, it, we're happy. So let's just make a visualization section. I always find it's nice to do this so I can check it and make sure things are going well as I go along. And let's just plot psi. So here's our psi, I'm gonna dress this up a little bit. And again, I think we need uh, better axes labels and larger axes labels. That's looking better. And add a Y label. Okay, looking pretty good. So we see this function that's the mirror image about the Y axis of the positive side of an exponential. Okay, so now we might ask ourselves is this normalized? And you might guess, oh, it's probably not, but let's, let's see. I'll call it psi squared, it'll be the magnitude squared. And to do that, of course, we take conj, the, uh, for the complex conjugate of psi, and we multiply it by itself, uh, by psi that is. Now I'm using the dot star because this is an element-wise multiplication rather than a matrix multiplication. 
because really, you know, these are vectors, but MATLAB treats a vector like a one by something matrix or a something by one matrix. And so this multiplication would not work unless we do the element wise multiplication. Now, this is the numerical integration. So to integrate it, we'll use the trap Z function. So we're just going to say this is the integral. And you might ask yourself, well, why trap Z? What on earth is this? Um, well, a good answer to your question can come if we type doc trap Z. We get a document browser. It brings up the documentation for this trap Z function. And uh, we're, we're integrating, basically. It's, it's an indefinite integral. It's a numerical approximation to this. And why is it trap Z? Well, you know the integral is the area underneath the curve. This is what we're talking about. So if you have some function here, it's sine x. What it's doing is doing a trapezoidal estimation of the area under the curve. So it's connecting the data points with a straight line and then using a trapezoidal approximation for that area. And then it adds them all up. And so it's this integral. Okay, so it, that's why uh, it returns a scalar is because it's approximating the little areas and then adding them all up and you get a scalar. So if we run this, we'll see what happens. So it tells me that uh, this psi squared integral is a little bit off, okay? It's not quite one, it's close, but it's not. So now, okay, so just to see that, right, we took psi magnitude squared, we're estimating the area under the curve, and that's the integral, uh, which integral in particular? That's this integral right here. Okay, and that integral is a little bit off. It's not quite one, but we can fix that. So we'll normalize it. We'll use this formula here. So I will make a normalized psi and we'll take one over square root of uh, this number right here. And then we'll multiply psi by that. And then let's just check. Let's do a magnitude squared for this normalized psi. And then let's integrate it. Okay, and that didn't work out because I forgot I, I need to give it the u vector here. So let's r try that again. Okay, now we see this uh, integral is 1. We successfully normalized our wave function. Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to help you calculate is the expectation value of x. But here it's going to be the expectation value of u. Recall it's the psi star, the operator, and then the psi, and then you integrate that. So we'll use trap z for our integral, and then we'll put here uh, psi norm. Uh, I'm going to just for And just to be precise, I'm going to put the conj here. In this case, it doesn't matter because psi norm is real. But we'll multiply it by u and then multiply it by the normalized psi again. And if I run this, I get this value here, uh, 1.756 times 10 to the negative 17. And that's essentially zero because it's, uh, it's very small compared to the length scale of our problem, right? Where u goes from negative 8 to positive 8. Okay, so one more thing I'll do is I'll, we'll make another plot here. 
and uh, I'm going to use figure to get a new figure and then I'm going to plot the uh, magnitude squared of our normalized psi. Let's just run it to see how that goes. Here's our new plot. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste some of the formatting stuff here and I'm going to change it a little bit. Instead of u, I'm going to put here x divided by a because it, it's a scaled length vector and then here I'll put uh, absolute value squared. Run that again. Okay, there's a nice plot. Let's also add the expectation value of x to this. In order to plot multiple lines in the same graph, well, I can put here dot 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 so we continue the thing on the next line. I have to put in here the x data and then the y data and our expectation value can be plotted using the value itself for x and I'm just going to multiply it by this little vector. It's a 1 by 2 vector and for y I'm going to specify two data points also. So when I run this, oh, it didn't like it because I forgot a comma. So I'm going to hit enter and uh, so it break it up. So right here, I'm going to type, this is the uh, plot of magnitude squared. The second line is the expectation value. Okay, so uh, to make it clearer, I'm going to add a little bit of a label. And to do that, I'm going to use the text command. If you look here, there's context help. It says the x position, the y, and the z, which is optional actually, and then the text you want it to say. So I'm going to say we're going to put it here at um, the x is going to be the expectation value. The y is going to be 1. So that should put it right up at the top here. And then what do we want it to say? Well, let's make it say uh, in dollar signs for latex styling here. Uh, left and right. That gives us the left and right brackets. And we'll put here. Or I can even make it uh, expectation value of x over a. Maybe I like that a little bit better. And let's say interpreter LaTeX. Uh, oh wow, it, it's going to fix it for me. Incredible. Love tab completion. Okay, let's save this and run it. So I just use keystrokes to save it. Now it's here, it's a little tiny, hard to see, so there are ways you can make that better. Uh, first off, let's make the font size better and incredible, it knows I want to make the font size bigger. Let's make the font size 18. You almost think it's listening to me, but n there it is, it's black. Uh, it's maybe not as easy to see yet as we'd like, but that's okay, we can fix that. Now, I'm going to uh, position it a little bit better. So the reference point, as we said, is the expectation value, which is 0 and 1. So it's right there. And you can see where it is in relation to our text. It's uh, to the left of our text, and it's centered. So we think of this as the anchor point. It's left and middle, I guess. So we'll change it. So we'll, we'll say here, I want to go next line just because this is getting long. And we'll put horizontal alignment. I guess it's not tab completing for me, but horizontal alignment. And we'll put it to bottom. Now that's a mistake. Horizontal alignment should be left, right, or center. So we'll make it centered run that. Oh, actually, okay, here's my issue. There's a font weight, and we don't want that. Okay, there it is. See, there's my x over a. It's Now it's horizontally centered, 
but let's put here the vertical alignment. Let's choose bottom. See, that's nicer. It sits where we like, but I'm going to change the color uh, to be the same color as this line. It helps the viewer understand that this label goes with that line. So how can we do that? So I'm going to, you know, this plot would give us both lines. So what I'm going to do is put here um, lines equals plot. And now this lines variable that I just defined is going to give me a handle to both of the lines. Okay, so now once I've done that, I can uh, specify the color here. We'll put it on the next line. The color, what color? Well, uh, we're going to get the color from lines 2 because it was the second line specified there. Lines 2 and color. We think that ought to work. And sure enough, the color of this is matching the color of that. Uh, that's helpful. So that should give you enough uh, MATLAB techniques, tips and tricks, so that you can uh, address your project one.